on the boat so we've already bailed some water out he found a crack in the bottom of his boat so uh been nice knowing you guys fishing with jd dudley the d2 jig has been an absolute game changer it's a reaction bait that's best when fished on higher and faster flowing water stick with us as jd and i show you some of the tips and tricks that we've learned from our time on the water fishing the d2 jig Uh, jig fishing, the, the the best way to do it, there are folks that use them on fly rods, but uh, the most effective way, or the most versatile way, I'll put it that way, is gonna be with a with a jig rod, a spinning rod. And the, the rods that I use are light action uh, uh, with a fast tip on it. And uh, you can get, you, you can use ultralight, a lot of people do use ultralight, so I would say the minimum length that you can be most effective with is probably a six footer. Uh, ideally, you're gonna use a six and a half or a seven footer just cause you can get real good whip on that rod when you cast it and get the jig out there a long ways. And uh, Then when you're working it, uh, that fast tip on a light action, <clears throat> it, gives the, uh, it gives the jig the perfect action as long as you're working it the right way. The reel that I use, uh, it's, a, uh, it's an Abu Garcia Revo X20. Uh, the Fluger President, Shimano Stratix, and even the even the those are those are kind of the top of the lines of those companies. But uh, I know the X20 for Reap for Abby Garcia is not, but but it's the best reel that I found. But any any spinning reel is going to work. Uh, the line the line that I use is this right here. Uh, it is two pound uh, trout magnet SOS uh, monofilament. And I've used a lot of different uh, line over the years. I've been doing this for uh, right at 40 years. And this, uh, this trap magnet SOS two pound line is the best that I've found. The diameter of the line allows the jig to fall at a rate that it needs to. It allows it to fall freely. And you want that jig to fall, to fall freely because it'll spiral down uh, to that lower third of the water column, which is where you want it. And as that jig is spiraling down, uh, those fish are gonna come to it and they're gonna, or they're gonna come down on it and eat it. The combination of the line with the rod and the reel and the jig uh, at the at these higher water conditions is, in my opinion, it's unmatched. Uh, the the jigs work really well because they spiral. Uh, the line does its job. The rod does its job. As it all comes together in a combination, it does. It's really really deadly, and you can catch not only some really good fish. You can catch a lot of fish doing it. We've had. 150, 200 fish days uh, on these things in you know five or six hours. So, uh, so it is. It's fun. That two pound test trout magnet SOS is a really, really good way to go. It's a very user friendly way to fish the D2 jig. But for me, on the Little Red River, I like doing something a little bit different. Uh, I like being able to see my line, and so when I'm using the trout magnet D2 jig. I'm also tying on a four pound phantom fluorocarbon leader and fishing it with braid. So whenever you see videos or if you have been in my boat and jig fished with me, a lot of the times we're using this braided line. It's got a lot of added benefits like added sensitivity and also being able to see exactly where your line is. I put the back in that mess, working around back. A lot of times it's such a reflex bite, it doesn't matter that it's working against the current. Usually, if you're going to catch one back there, it's going to be the first couple of pops. Oh, mama. That might be the fish. I've got a spot pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good land of rod. Good fish. Good, good fish. Brown.
right, so sometimes you may find yourself stationary. Right now I've got the trolling motor on spot lock. I'm at the bottom of a shoal, and there's quite a few fish right here as it starts to drop off. So what I'm gonna do is cast across the current and then reel just enough to keep it up off the bottom. And I'm gonna add in intermittent pops and letting it sink, pop, let it sink. So let's see what this looks like. I go across the current, close my bell, let it sink, pop up, one crank, pop up, maybe half a crank, pop up, it's swinging around, pop up, swinging around, and I'm watching that line for any jumps. If those fish should hit it, rise it sinks. So it's falling. Still waiting. And sometimes I'll do this for literally five minutes, as long as it's out there. If the current's fast enough to keep, leave it there, then I'll fish it. And that's the result. A lot of people bring it in way too quick. One of the most common mistakes that I see folks make is that they pop it too much. I don't know if the best way to say is that they pop it too much or if they reel it too much, but basically their jig does not spend enough time near the bottom. The more time it spends near the bottom, the more fish you're gonna catch. That's two casts, two fish. like they're here it's probably four feet deep so i'm gonna let it sink and i'm not popping it much if you notice how much line is actually getting picked up not just a whole lot it's just enough to make that jig jump and fall so really in water this low i only want that jig going up and down about a foot A lot of folks fish it way too fast. And basically they're just reeling way too much. Notice half a crank, not even a half a crank. As long as I can make that motion right there and still pop it up, I'm not gonna reel. This guy hit it on the initial fall cast landed about a foot from the bank. They're not always world records, but man, are they beautiful. He ate peaches. It sees it. Watch. No, 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 no,